Welcome back to Talking Point Tuesday, the PFA's weekly snapshot on the issues impacting Australian football. The issue of concussion in football is in the spotlight once again as the England, Scotland and Northern Ireland football associations confirmed that children under the age of 12 would be banned from heading the ball in training, guidelines which have already been adopted by US soccer in 2015. This follows the release of the field study from the University of Glasgow, which found that former professional footballers were more likely to die of degenerative brain disease. While the field study stopped short of claiming that heading a ball was the cause of increased prevalence of neurodegenerative conditions among footballers, the fact that three of the British-based FAs have moved so swiftly in taking preemptive action has raised alarm bells on the other side of the globe. Australian sport has been rocked by the revelation that AFL legend Graham Polly Farmer was diagnosed with CTE in his brain after he passed away in August last year. He joins three former rugby league professionals with the same diagnosis and over 100 cases in the United States where the prevalence of repeated concussions in the NFL is significantly higher than other football codes. While collision injuries are less common in the world game, the sport continues to be proactive in analysing the impact that concussion has on the health and well-being of its athletes. The PFA has worked closely with FIFPRO in researching the long-term effects of concussion in football, tapping into feedback from current and past players to help form a clearer picture on the global scale. The PFA has also played a role in collectively bargaining for minimum medical standards, with one of the outcomes being the implementation of FFA's concussion guidelines, which advocate for players with suspected concussion to be removed from the field of play and be assessed by a qualified medical practitioner. With these measures already in place and more research invested into the effects of concussion, there have been numerous calls from experts in the field for football to take preventative action, particularly at junior levels, essentially following the lead taken by the US and now the UK. While banning heading from training before a certain age may lower the exposure to repetitive heading of a ball, it does little to advocate the promotion of safe heading techniques. An update to the national football curriculum, which only mentions heading a mere five times, would be essential to ensuring the correct techniques are taught to our aspiring young footballers.